college jump. Good morning, church. Greetings to one and all. A note if I am not on your screen, then please click the button in the upper right hand corner, click on my name, and then you will pin me onto the screen. Glad to have everyone joining us today at the Moscow Goldsboro Charge Sunday Worship Service. We are live streaming the service to you today following the precautions set forth for social distancing due to the coronavirus pandemic. We may not still be able to physically be together in the church building, yet we are united by way of the Holy Spirit in God's grace through the cross of Christ. Through our faith, we are in unbroken connection to each other, forever instilled with peace and with hope in the love that never fails and that is of endless supply. We begin today with some notes on the service and some announcements. We did receive a letter from our Bishop Jeremiah Park and he is extending the suspension for all gatherings of worship and other non-essential church activities for all the churches of the Susquehanna Conference until further notice. He writes, as the COVID-19 situation escalates, we must follow the best preventative practices and use the utmost caution." End quote. We know this is a needed measure to assure the safety of the church. It is a difficult time and it is very difficult even more because it's such a holy time of the year during the Lenten season. Next Sunday is the beginning of Holy Week, which of course ends with the dawn of Easter morning. This brings emotions, I'm sure of disappointment that we will not be in the same physical location to join in traditions and Easter worship in our sanctuaries. However, we march on as the church, victorious, ever believing in the Holy Spirit that does bind us together, regardless of social distancing. Keep alert for announcements through our modes of communication for possible extra methods of relating during this time of Lent and of Easter. God will lead us to celebrate the resurrection of our Savior in a fulfilling manner, absolute fulfilling manner. Have no doubt of that, for our God is an awesome God. God is good. We continue to work diligently on improving our live stream worship. So please bear with us for the fine tuning of everything again. Definitely mark your calendars for next week again at 10 o'clock to tune in for that Palm Sunday service that we shall have. 
Now a disclaimer for the service. This is a new medium uh, for us to present our worship service. Please be aware that this service is being recorded for people that are not able to attend today to view. It will be shared and posted online at a later time as an archive of today's service. We ask that anyone using a video feature to mute their video and audio at the bottom of the current video screen. Anyone on the phone, if you could please mute your phone as you normally would. During the service, we may ask for participation from members. Please be aware then to unmute the phone or your computer because you are being recorded and then you will become part of the dig digital record of the service. By actively participating in this service, you waive all rights you may have for any claims of payment or royalties from the use of the video. Again, we ask you to please mute your devices until we ask for participation. Some parish notes to share with you. The area food pantry continues to be open during their regular hours for drive-through pickup. Uh, those going to the food pantry for the first time will have to register in the pantry office. Um, one item that the pantry is in need of is peanut butter. The pantry is appreciative of any donations that anyone can give of this item. And we thank all of those people that continue to be out there to keep our food pantry going and food pantries all across the country and the world so that they are operating smoothly and helping those people that are in such need of food. Please remember to mail in weekly offerings as you are able to assure that our ministries are fully prepared to assist others. We are thankful for uninterrupted giving in faithfulness to God's ministry for grace for the needy and the vulnerable. Um, palms, uh, palms for Palm Sunday and our Easter flowers, they will be available for pickup. More details regarding the time and the manner of this will be forthcoming. So check emails, check our social sites at, for more information, call the church offices. In addition to the prayer requests that we share here during worship, if anyone has any other requests during the week, please do let us know by calling the church or email those requests to us. Little service overview. This morning we will worship again, sharing in scripture readings and in a message and in prayer. We look forward to bringing a sense of security for the days and the weeks ahead. As we remain homebound and hopeful, praising God and prayerful, nourished physically and spiritually by our daily bread, and good-natured and thoughtful. Again, that is also known as being patient and considerate of one another. Keep smiling. Keep calm. Living close to God always. Focused with deeply rooted faith, void of being tempted by fear and anxiety. Also, please do take time to check in on your family, on your friends, your neighbors, those who might be vulnerable around you. Phone call, greeting card, gracious gesture makes a huge difference in someone's life at this time. Let us now take a moment to be in prayer together. Let us pray. Glorious and everlasting God, Lord, as we join in worship this day, help us to let go of what keeps us from fully receiving all of your love, all of your grace, all of your goodness. Open us, Lord. Soften our hearts and let us not attempt to go it alone. 
for we can't, especially when it comes to forgiveness and loving without conditions. We know this, Lord, as we continue on our Lenten journeys. You, Lord, are our power. You, Lord, bring us all we need. You give us that outlook to continue on. Again, Lord, open our eyes, open our minds, our hearts to act in faithfulness, for you are ever faithful to us. We pray this in Jesus' name. Our gospel reading today comes to us from the Gospel of John. It is the lectionary reading for the fifth Sunday in of the Bible. Now Bethany was left than two miles from of their brother. When Martha heard that he said, whatever Hello all, little commercial interruption there, not selling anything though. Let us continue on with our gospel reading. Jesus said to her, your brother will rise again. And Martha answered, I know he will rise again in the resurrection at the last day. Jesus said to her, I am the resurrection and the life. Those who believe in me will live even though they die. And whoever lives believing in me will never die. Do you believe this? Yes, Lord, she replied. I believe that you are the Messiah, the Son of God, who has come into the world. After she had said this, she went back and called her sister Mary aside. The teacher is here, she said, and is asking for you. When Mary heard this, she got up quickly and went to him. Now Jesus had not yet entered the village, but was still at the place where Mary had met him. When the Jews who had been with Mary in the house comforting her noticed 
how quickly she got up and that she went out. They followed her, supposing she was going to the tomb to mourn there. When Jesus reached the place where Jesus was and saw him, she fell at his feet and said, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. When Jesus saw her weeping and the Jews who had come along with her, he was deeply moved in spirit and troubled. Where have you laid him? He asked. Come and see, Lord, they replied. Jesus wept. Then the Jews said, see how he loved him. But some of them said, could not he who opened the eyes of the blind man had kept this man from dying? Jesus, once more deeply moved, came to the tomb. It was a cave with a stone laid across the entrance. Take away the stone, Jesus said. But Lord, said Martha, the sister of the dead man, by this time there is a bad odor, for he has been there for four days. Then Jesus said, did I not tell you that if you believe, you will see the glory of God? So they took away the stone. Then Jesus looked up and said, Father, I thank you that you have heard me. I knew that you always hear me, but I have said this for the benefit of the people standing here, that they may believe that you sent me. When he said this, Jesus called out in a loud voice, Lazarus, come out. And the dead man came out. His hands and his feet were wrapped with strips of linen and a cloth around his face. Jesus said to them, take off the grave clothes and let him go. Here ends this reading. May God add a blessing. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, may the words of my mouth and the meditation of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. We are now deep into the Lenten season, the holy season in which we are to journey inward to strengthen our faith. And we are each to prepare our innermost self for the resurrection of Christ on Easter morning. Some say it is a time for reflective thinking, to consider the whole person that God created each of us to be, that we are to listen for God's divine purpose to be revealed to us in grace. As I said next week, we will celebrate Jesus' triumphant entry into Jerusalem to begin Holy Week. Today, however, the gospel lesson centers around this story of the death and the resurrection of Lazarus. It is a story of darkness and of sin and death. It is also a story of faith and hope. It is a preview of what is yet to come. The whole chapter, this whole chapter of John, of John 11, excuse me, is the account, the full account of Lazarus' death and resurrection. It is the single most important miracle that Jesus ever performed during his earthly life. It marks the beginning of the end for him. 
The religious leaders, the Pharisees and the Sadducees, they had been searching for a way to get rid of Jesus. He was seen as a huge threat to them because he challenged their customs and their beliefs. He endangered their false security, their false lifestyles, and taught a message that they just could not accept. For them, this man, Jesus, he had to go. He had been traveling throughout the countryside, performing various miracles, forgiving sinners, telling people that he was the light of the world and the good shepherd, and sharing information on the kingdom of heaven. They were not happy about this. These leaders knew that they could not allow Jesus to continue teaching and preaching as he was, for they were losing their power and control over their people. So when Jesus performs this public act of resurrecting Lazarus after he had been dead for four days, this devious group, they finally figured that they had Jesus right where they wanted him. And they immediately began to plot his death. The scripture today is set in Bethany, which is just southeast of Jerusalem on the Jericho Road. It is a familiar place for Jesus. He often stopped there during his travels to visit, to stay with his friends, Mary, Martha, and Lazarus. He felt very comfortable with them in their home. These siblings were very strong followers of Jesus and they were faithful to him. There are other accounts of their friendship in the gospels. This relationship between Jesus, Mary, Martha and Lazarus, it is a treasured one. So when Lazarus became sick, Mary and Martha, they knew that Jesus would be the only one who could heal him. So they sent word where Jesus was to come to help his close friend that was in need of his, his help. They believed in Jesus and thought he would immediately drop everything and come to their aid. But Jesus didn't drop everything and rush to them because he knew that if he only had to heal Lazarus, it wouldn't be enough. It wouldn't make near the impact upon the people as witnessing a resurrection would. He also knew that this was all part of the divine plan that he performed this miracle to show everyone the glory of God's power. The fact is, Lazarus, in this state of death, could do nothing for himself. Neither can we. Through life and death, we must remember that we are totally dependent upon our Lord for everything. He meets all of our needs. At this point, we need to think and look at death figuratively. Death is anything which keeps us from the love of God. Like when we find ourselves trapped in the darkness of sin, such as fear or worry, or resentment, disappointment, or jealousy, in these trials of life, when we are anxious maybe, or insecure, threatened by doubt, we need more than ever to focus on God, or we will end up feeling like we are drifting away from God. These times, they strengthen our faith. 
they make us spiritually courageous people. We must learn from these experiences to bring good out of bad situations so that others will believe in the glory of God. These times can be very hard. They are hard to go through and during them, it's important that we do pray. We pray for help, but we want a quick answer oftentimes in our hardships, especially. And although quick answers don't always come, we know that. So then we must trust, trust in God. As we pray, we listen and we wait. Praying is the easy part. Listening and waiting, we have problems with those oftentimes as humans. Communication, we don't like to listen and wait. Now a story is told to illustrate this. It's a communication that was happening between a husband and a wife. And so the husband tried to figure this out. So in communicating with his wife, he concluded that she was becoming hard of hearing. So he decided to conduct this test to let her know about it. So one evening, he sat in a chair on the far side of the room. Her back was to him and she couldn't see him. Very quietly, he whispered, can you hear me? There was no response. Moving a little closer, he again asked, can you hear me? Again, no response. Quietly, he edged closer and closer and whispered the same words with no answer that was to come. Finally, he moved right up behind his wife and he said to her, can you hear me now? And to his surprise, she responded with irritation in her voice. And she said for the fourth time, yes, yes, I hear you, but you are not listening to me. You can't hear me. It's hard for us to listen and waiting. We don't even want to wait in line at the grocery store, wait for the phone to ring or a letter to come but yet we must sometimes in life. That's why we pray. We listen and we wait with our Lord. This pattern of positive progression. An answer will always come. God will guide us. God will deliver us. Now, in the routine of life, today, during small challenges, small hills of challenge. We have our faith, we keep our faith, we profess it, just like Mary and Martha did. As in the scripture, remember though, then it came to this time, this hard time in their life. Mary and Martha, they represent us. We believe in God, we have faith, but, during these difficult times, these unexpected and emotional mountains, sometimes we do try to veer off on our own and live without God. In these, in these verses, before the ones that we hear, Jesus was arriving on this scene of sorrow. He had heard of the death of Lazarus. So as he approaches, the sisters both come out to him separately and they ask, where were you? If you were here, my brother would not have died. This wouldn't have happened if you had come. We needed you. We needed you earlier. They were frantic in their believing. In their sorrow, they were wondering what the future would hold for them. 
What would they do without their brother? They are concerned. There was no need for them, especially in that moment, to be concerned because their answer was standing right in front of them. These times of the darkness, of any kind of the unknown, hard as they may be to take, they happen, but we will get through them. So the people in today's story who were grieving, they do what we do during times of death and sorrow. They were there to comfort Mary and Martha. They had gathered to console one another. So there's this crowd of people by the time Jesus and his disciples arrive. And all of these things started happening. And Jesus is deeply moved in spirit and overcome with emotion. In verse 35, Jesus wept. The shortest verse in the Bible, but one that speaks volumes. This phrase, it reveals the character of who Jesus was, who Jesus is to us. Jesus was and is both divine and human. And here he is in the midst of this deep pain, weeping. Jesus knows what it is to hurt. Jesus feels our emotions because he's been there in his humanity. He's witnessed the unexpected and the hurt the confinement and injustice. The Gospels are filled with stories of Jesus, and in them he is happy, he is sad, he's mad, and a time or two he is even crying out to God in his fearful moments. He knows how we feel at all times, so we should never be apprehensive about going to him with anything. He's waiting to share everything with us. Jesus wept in a world of vulnerability, a world of self-indulgence, a world of unrest. Jesus wept. Why? Could be for many reasons. The most obvious being he was compassionate in sharing in the sorrow of Lazarus' death with his friends. He cried also tears of action and tears of commitment for him. For he knew that by bringing Lazarus out of the tomb, he would set into motion the events that would inevitably lead to his own tomb. He would stare death in the face, face to face, this is a deep moment for Jesus in many aspects. Or possibly Jesus wept because he was frustrated by the apparent lack of faith that was surrounding him in the faces of all the people. He tells them, I am the resurrection and I am the life. He who believes in me shall never die. They will die, but even though from this world they die, they shall live. And whoever lives and believes in me, Jesus says, believes in me, shall never die. Then he asks them a question. Do you believe? Do you believe in this? Do you believe in me? These mourners had stirred up his blood. They had wrenched his gut. He is the son of the father, the power that has come to defeat death and to call persons forth into a new existence with him forever in the kingdom of heaven. He will transform all people and all eras from all hurts and hard experience experiences and set all people free that believe. 
So upon witnessing this reaction of the mourners, he proceeds to the tomb, to Lazarus' tomb. He had them roll away the stone, and he called Lazarus out and gave him new life. Lazarus emerged wrapped in his grave clothes, and Jesus said, remove those and let him go free. We are not to get caught in the snare of grief. We're to travel on in the promise of the resurrection. In times of separation, such as we are going through, we are to remain united with God, to not let this feeling of death, of grief, get to us, but hold on to the promise of Jesus. For this is liberating, and it releases us for kingdom living. And we know that eternity and the bliss of heaven is coming someday. It will be ours. I have heard some people say during this time that we're going through of social distancing, the unknown, that they feel this sense of grief. All of a sudden, life stopped for them as they knew it. So take heart in this message of hope and continue on. Keep going. Life is a gift, and receiving it is simple. Trust in God's word. Trust in God's word. I am the resurrection, and I am the life. Keep believing, always no matter what. Remain ever focused on the everlasting presence of the light of our God. This prophetic pre-Easter message that we have today of darkness and redemption and death and life, it does bring hope to believe, to receive then the assurance of God's power, of God's power of grace and mercy that we need so badly. It's there for us to receive. Amen. Also now hear these words from the book of Hebrews. Hebrews chapter 11, verse 1. Now faith is confidence in what we hope for and assurance about what we do not see. We are urged, we are encouraged, but we are even more urged today by God through God's word to keep on keeping on in faith. Live what we profess to believe. Now more than ever before, because we are in this place and time that we have never experienced before, believing believe during this time because you've professed it for so long. Believing opens all of us up with completeness to all that we need to carry us through these trying times of the unknown and these emotions that we feel. Don't let Jesus have to ask the question, do you believe in me? Allow Jesus to be the answer because he's the only answer. Say yes to Jesus in every moment. Yes, Jesus, I believe. Then the light of faith will shine to guide you through with confidence. Hope and assurance in faith are divine compelling forces that release us from that which weighs us down. When what we are moving through is too much to listen to or to look at, believe in the resurrecting, liberating power of Jesus. It's a promise. The time will arrive when separation will end and real living in relationship will commence. Oh, what a day that will be. We will endure 
and emerge victorious in and through any circumstance of this world while rejoicing in what is yet to come. Remain faith-centered in these days of Lent to sense the close presence of your God. Be devoted to joyful obedience in sacrifice and feel that contentment, even though it's hard. Feel content in everything because everything's going to be all right with our God. Let us now turn to a time of prayer together. If you have any prayer requests, please move your mouse to the bottom of the screen and unmute your microphone. When you're done, then just remute your microphone. If you're on a phone, please unmute and mute your phone if you have something to share. Do we have any requests, any concerns this day that you would like to lift up in prayer? Um, this is Lindsay, and I have a prayer request. Yes. Um, we have a friend of our family that just passed away. Um, he lost his battle with cancer, and we would like prayers for him, his family, Matthew Beckage. The Beckage family? Thank you. We will pray for them in their time of grief. Thank you, Lindsay. Any others? How about joys? Anyone wish to share a joy? What is God doing in your life? You know, for me on Friday, the days all run together. Friday was a beautiful day that God blessed us with to get out and walk around and and just enjoy and breathe in the clean air. Just times like those we must engage in. Pastor Lori. Yes. Uh, Ciro family here. Uh, yes. We'd like to request prayers for uh, Frank and Norma Ciro. Um, who are self-quarantining. Um, they uh, returned from a, tri a overseas trip and um, they have both tested positive for the COVID. Um, they are recuperating at home, uh, thankfully. Um, and there's, you know, their symptoms. Um, they really haven't had the typical symptoms at all. Um, uh, and uh, we're thankful that uh, nothing is worsening and they are recuperating. Well, we will pray. Thank you, Bonnie. We will pray for Frank and Norma Thank in you. this time of this positive test. Thank yes, you. absolutely. You are welcome. Anyone else wish to share any prayer requests? <laughs> Pastor Lori? Yes. It's Nancy Schwenk. I just want to say thank you to you and Jay Kroom and all of your crew that is making it possible for us to share God's word together. Thank you very much. We appreciate that. We love what we do and we want to bring God's love to everybody to continue to connect in it. Thank you, Nance. Thanks. Thank you very much. Hi, everybody. David Stevens speaking from Florida. Hi, David. Just like, how are you doing? Just like to give thanks not only for the communication that you're continuing with, but actually the communication that we can all share in via email, Facebook, etc. Just imagine what these last couple of weeks would have been like if we hadn't been able to go to our devices. So thank you, Lord, for all the science that you're using for good purposes. Amen. Thank you, David. Beautiful. Very beautiful. Anyone else? If not, let us begin in silent prayer. Pray from your heart to the God who loves you. Let us pray. Lord, on this day, when we breathe in the freshness of your watering the earth, 
Lord, we know that there is beauty in every raindrop. There are rainbows all around that we might not be able to see, but we have faith in them. Lord, we thank you for your creation that we can experience and enjoy all the birds and the flowers. We thank you, Lord, for the fellowship of one another. And Lord, enable us to continue on our Lenten journey, seeking forgiveness, seeking your guidance as we walk in faith. Give us a strength, Lord, to be better for your world as your disciples. Let us help those around us in sharing even the simplest random act of kindness from a distance. Lord, let us believe always in your words, for they are true and they get us through the good times and the bad times. Thank you, Lord, for your word. And Lord, we lift up much in our hearts this day, as well as we lift up to you, we lift up to you by name, we lift up the Beckage family in their time of grieving for the loss of a loved one, that they would be open to feel your presence of hope and of peace that we hear of. Lord, we lift up Frank and Norma to you as they self-quarantine. Lord, let them just know that your arms are embracing them, lifting them up, giving them the healing power that they need every day. And Lord, we continue to lift up to you all emergency service people, volunteers and workers. We lift up to you those that are out working so that out of necessities for us, that they continue to be out there doing for us. Lord, we lift up our leaders to you that they would seek your divine wisdom in everything as they make decisions. And Lord, we are thankful, we have joy and praise in our hearts for the many blessings you give us, especially this day for technology for worshiping together, for communicating. When we can't physically be together, Lord, you make it possible that we still connect in your grace. We are ever thankful, Lord. And Lord, let us now continue to pray together as we worship the words that Jesus taught us to in the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, Hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil, for thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. So wherever you may be this week, you are not alone. God is present. Your church is present with you. Connect. And know we are all in this together, united by the Spirit. Probably we are continuing to have, seeking those moments of patience, avoiding temptation, that craving of going out to interact Maybe basically we're just going a bit stir crazy, but you're not in that alone either. Again, keep smiling. Count to 10, count to 100 by this time if you have to. We can and we will get through this. Love and kindness shall carry us on to easier going ways and brighter days. Some ending reminders. Please listen to our continued devotions through this week on our podcasts. And information will be going out through emails. And um, we hope to continue to bring you inspiration through our social media sites that we have at both of our churches here at the Moscow and the Gouldsboro United Methodist Churches. Mm -hmm. And we plan on continuing to creatively engage in these ways of spiritual connection through this temporary time 
of remote bonding while renewing our relationships and discovering new opportunities. Thank you for worshiping God with us today. Have a blessed and a beautiful day in all you do. And stay tuned also to the Moscow and Goldsboro United Methodist Churches as we continue to put God's grace in motion. Receive now this benediction. May the love of God the Father, the tenderness of Jesus the Son, and the presence of the Holy Spirit gladden your heart and bring peace to your soul this day and all days. Amen. When the world was begun And I danced in the moon And the stars and the sun I came down from heaven And I danced on the earth At Bethlehem I had my birth I danced for the scribe And the Pharisee But they would not dance And they wouldn't follow me I danced for the fishermen For James and for John They came with me